Welcome back to another episode of Open Shutter. We have on the panel, Salorm Evans. We are missing Brian, who uh, just left work. And we're not sure if he's going to make it, but if he does, uh, it'll be much appreciated. And today we're going to talk about uh, when to shoot in color versus black and white. I guess maybe more importantly is when to edit in color versus black and white. So we're kind of going to go through some examples. We're going to give some tips and tricks and kind of how we approach these shots. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Paul, based in Toronto. Run a, a photography meetup group called Get Out Shoot Toronto. Visit us at getoutshoot.com. We do weekly meetups. And uh, this show is hosted on my channel today. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you check out these fellows' YouTube channels. The links are in the description. And uh, maybe a quick 20 second pitch as Sloan drinks a bottle of water. Which is a great segue for his <laughs> <laughs> intro. His <laughs> I'll drink water, guys. Stop coffee. drinking soda or, and coffee. Drink no, no water. soda. You gotta stay hydrated. It's important. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Today, um, we're gonna talk about when to edit in black and white or shoot in black and white. Yeah. And um, my name is Salom. Uh, company name is Meek Photos. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer based in Texas, Fort Worth, Texas. So Fort if you are near the area, let me know. Let's collaborate. Let's mix, do something. Mix, mix is your All man. Right. Mix is your man. All right, Evans, over to you. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Evans. I'm based in Brampton, Ontario. Um, wedding events for portraits photography. Um, today is going to be a fun time because, you know, I actually had a video recorded on this topic yeah. that never really posted. <laughs> so we're going to have uh, fun go. times, and um, I think we're going to share some great tips that may benefit a lot of us, especially those of us who are pretty new to this and want to learn to improve on our style and composition and stuff like that. There's going to be yeah. some great tips that will help you out uh, in that direction. So it's going to be a fun show. This was and actually, weirdly, is like I was trying to write a blog post on this, and I kind of got stumped. So it's kind of where the idea came from. So I'm basically going to steal all of your points and just put it into the blog post. <laughs> put it That's kind of, it's like, oh, what are we going to talk about? It's like, mm, I don't know how to write this blog post. But anyway, should be good. Should be fun. Um, so maybe I'll start off since I'm the one that is hosting. So let me, I'm going to share an example of, um, went to shoot black and white instead of editing in black and white. And if I can get StreamYard to work, that'd be fantastic. Maybe this photo. All right, I think we're good. Brian, if you're on, <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> Do you guys have me? Yep, we can yeah. see you. You see the photo? Yeah. Cool. Yep. So this is Massey Hall, which uh, for Meeks, it's a concert hall in Toronto. And this is open doors or doors open. And basically it's when they open up certain uh, sites around the city that are usually off limits. And um, this is like this is like when I first started to get into photog photography a little bit seriously. And I think for me, the reason why I shot this black and white is just because like I wanted to highlight like the symmetry of the shot, right? Because I think I think if you want to shoot this color, you may, you just may lose the romance of it. I'm not sure in your thoughts, guys, but to me, it's like, I just want to capture a mood. And like Massey Hall is like a, it's a historical heritage building that's been around for such a long time. And you can just imagine like all the shows that went, went down here. And that's, and that's kind of re the reason why I shot black and white, just want to capture the mood of it. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? What what was the um uh do you remember what the color cast was at the time? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is like 
but I mean, you did capture what you wanted to capture, and and that you know, uh, uh, you don't need color to understand this this picture. So that's no, perfect. Yes, because yeah. the, the way the seats are arranged, yeah, um, kind of adds to that kind of leading line sort of thing, um, and and you can see that contrast between sure. the brighter sides and the darker shades, and, and that yeah. makes for a, a good black and white image. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think I think that's a good tip when you want to shoot black and white is you want to you want to just look for symmetry and patterns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Massey Hall, trust me, it's worthwhile. I think it's gonna be opening up next year or something. So it's actually a great Brian great says he'll be here soon. Brian? Oh yeah. there he is. Oh yeah. Thanks, buddy. All right, hurry up, Brian. <laughs> 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 Uh, okay, so I'm going to share one image, and I'm not going to talk about the how I shot this yet. Well, maybe I should. So I'm going to show you guys um, three se series of images. Yeah. Um, and one of them, or some of them, you guys may have seen already. But I want to show you guys how I actually shot that image and why I did it that way. Or maybe let me start off with one that no one has seen before that I probably, I haven't shared this on Instagram or any of the platforms. No, so I'm gonna show this image first. Oh, wow. Let me I share feel, my desktop. I feel so special now. <laughs> why? <laughs> Get to see it first. <laughs> it's special, man. At first, <laughs> yes, yes. So there is a couple of things that I started doing recently well, not recently, but I've been doing this for a while. And the whole idea of this is to help improve your composition. So if you're getting started and you are struggling with composition, my biggest advice to you is start shooting in black and white. Now, what I mean shooting black and white doesn't mean that all your pictures should turn out in black and white. But what I say is set your camera's creative style yeah. to black and white. But right. because you are shooting raw, right, your final product is still going to be in color, right? So personally, I set my stuff to shoot raw plus JPEG, yep. and then I switch my creative style to black and white. And the main reason why I do that, it's because when you are beginning to learn composition, not even as a beginner, but even as a, a seasoned person who knows your composition very well, when yep. you begin to shoot in black and white, what it does for you is that it allows you to strip away all the color details mm -hmm. of the image, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you focus more on your composition. Yep. Makes so sense. all the color data is not there to distract your eyes on, oh, I see this color, I see that, because your focus then will be on the composition, on, on your framing. Yep. Where yeah. do I want to put the subject? Do I want to put in the lower third or in the right third? That kind of stuff. So I've shared my screen and I'll show you an image. Now, this image here, I have I did not edit this black and white. I shot this image black and white. You shot it black and white, okay. Right. So yeah. this is the JPEG version of that image that I shot black and white. Right. Um, and if I go into Lightroom, this is the color version that I edited. But if I do before and after, oh, where am I? Let me go back here. And if I do the before and after, this was the color data that came into the raw. Right. Right. So because I have my camera set to shoot raw plus JPEG, I keep the color version which I will edit if I want to, or I can keep the raw JPEG, which is still in black and white, if I want to, mm -hmm. right? Um, and this allows me to basically just focus on, 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 you know, practicing my composition skills instead of allowing all the color details on the scene to distract me. Right. Which makes it's yeah, it's a cool approach. I've never even thought of that before. 
Right. But if if you are doing this, you have to make sure that you are not shooting JPEG only. Right. Yeah. If, if you want to keep um, the JPEGs as well as the, the color version, then set your camera to RAW plus JPEG. So even though you're going to see a preview of the JPEG in black and white, when you get into post, you still have that color version in the RAW file that you can edit at any time to however you want. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Do you always shoot RAW plus JPEG? Um, not well when i'm doing my own stuff yes when i'm shooting weddings i shoot jpeg i mean i shoot raw to both cards right okay but my camera takes two card slots um if if i'm running about about doing like a meetup or doing my own kind of practice and stuff then mm -hmm. yeah i shoot jpeg to one of the card slots right uh but most of the time for weddings and events i shoot raw to both cards just as a redundancy kind of thing so i have two copies of the same image at any right. time should in case one card fails when i'm walking around i really don't need a backup but i still shoot a jpeg um mm -hmm. for for to the card and that's where most of the time i do this kind of thing raw plus jpeg because i i wanna i mean shoot in uh, black and white because it's my own practice time i want to focus more on yeah. my composition skills and so shooting that in in black and white and keeping that black and white copy on my one of my sd card slots um helps out even if your camera has one sd card slot mm -hmm. because those, some you of some, some it, of the yeah. cameras still allows you to shoot right the jpeg to the same yeah color. right i i yeah. was just asking because i was curious about space it's like i've gotten to mm -hmm. a point where so every single picture i've ever shot i have so i have terabytes of lots of space so i am i try to do things not to add too much onto that because i end up taking a lot of pictures i take sometimes i take more than 300 pictures on a simple photo shoot <laughs> so I, if i'm if i'm saving raw yeah. plus J jpeg you know it's just gonna keep going up 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 well, so so this is the thing, right? Um, storage right now it's it's cheap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. still a big problem though, because if you're shooting a lot, right? Especially if you're doing video, yeah. yeah. But what I do is this: when I come in and I start editing, I go through my Kellen process, and after I call, I get out and I take. There are some pictures that I know that this is definitely garbage, right? Mm -hmm. Right away, I'm deleting those from my hard drive, saving that space. Right. So my, my curling process is I, I do it in maybe two to three phases. The first phase, I'm just taking a look at all the garbage that I don't want. I delete those off my hard drive right away. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I go through to see which ones I'm going to edit, which ones I'm not. Right. Hey, Brian. What's up, fellas? You made it home quick. Hey. Grow fast. Grow fast. Grow fast. <laughs> One second. Beautiful. I'm exhausted. <laughs> so welcome. Thanks. Yeah. So in that same series, right? Um, all of these shots I have here in Lightroom, I believe this one I did share on Instagram. Yeah, you did. In the yeah. group. Yeah. Uh, but this one as well, I also shot this in the same way. I shot the original in black and white. It's I don't think, uh, yeah, it's one of these shots. So I, I shot them all as well in black and white. And I think this one too I shared, and I shot it in black and white. Um, and the reason why I do that is at that point, I'm practicing composition, and I want to be able to um, take away all the stuff that would distract me and just focus on my composition and not all the color details and stuff like that. But I still have the, the colored version that I can bring into Lightroom and edit and not all the color details and stuff like that but yep. i like it yeah i mean it's a great approach i think truly really focused on composition i also like the color oh. version too man <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so that's the thing the 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 you have the both the, the best of both worlds so mm -hmm. you, whilst you are focusing on composition and you are not focusing on the color yeah. you end up having good composed images that kind of become very strong in the end because you your your focus the color piece right 
taken away from that image or that scene mm. um, gives you a lot of room to see um, how you want to position the subject, the stuff yeah. that you want in the scene, right? Yeah. Without that color detail being dominant on the scene. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's excellent. Composition right. is so important. So important. Excellent point. Okay, how do I share my screen here? Share screen. Evan has stop sharing his, I think, yeah. All right. Oh, you got a banger there, eh, Mix? All right. So nice. I um yeah, Jeez. so I don't I don't always shoot black and white. I don't use it as much as I should, like Evans explained, you know, for composition and, and stuff like that. Uh but I use it to save my behind <laughs> when Weird. I need to. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. For example, this wedding, I shot this wedding at the Harrisburg uh, Capitol building. And it was huge with those, um, you know, old school Catholic uh, glass that had different yeah. colors on each panel. And yeah. there was light cast all over, different kinds of light. And in fact, the color picture, even though I tried to use a uh, two strobes to kind of fight it, I still struggled. So uh, black and white, kind of, kind of, but this picture was actually not one of the the uh, favorite pictures I ended up delivering because I feel like they kind of blended into the environment, but the bride, uh, the bride really liked it. Uh, <laughs> that's all that matters. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's all that matters. matters. The bride likes it. Beautiful. Right. So I'm looking at it now, and I'm thinking about all the different ways I can make them pop. You know, I can I can de dehaze the environment a little bit more and make them stand out, give them a little bit more contrast to stand out and all yeah. that. But definitely, I use black and white when I'm struggling with color, and yeah. when uh, I I don't have enough time to go put on color gels to match yeah. the color temperature in the room. Mm -hmm. And I'm over here trying to go blue light against yellow light, uh, watching the skin tones. And um, I save myself with black and white. And in, yeah. when, you're when you're editing black and white, you can select individual colors and make them lighter or darker. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that way you can bring a bunch of colors down to the same level so that um, it's not very obvious that there are different, you know, light temperatures in your, your picture. So it's great photo, man. I think YouTube is having issues tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't even it's get to that. Today. Yeah, I'm, so. I, I'm, I'm reloading your poll stuff. I'm like, I yeah, can't, yeah, I can't, it's it's reloading. I can't even get to the stream. Our show is so hot. We, our show is so hot. We brought down YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so the, the question is, is it, is it actually live though? Yeah, we're live. It we're is live. live. I we're see live, the guys right? are commenting, yeah, but yeah, I think right. they're all having issues getting on too. Yeah. So oh, man. I thought it was just my phone. So I've been no. trying different devices. <laughs> you see? That sucks. That's that's iPad it. here, I was trying. I had my phone, I was trying. Yeah. And I still couldn't get the stream up. Sucks for the watch. I thought it was my internet. I'm like, how am I able to uh, be on StreamYard and then not? <laughs> yeah. Come on, you two. Get it together now. What's up, well, thanks, bro? On. thanks, Tony. Thanks, Ishman. Appreciate that. Makes great photo, man. Thank you, thank I also, you. I also love the angle. I also love thank how you. the angle that you took that. Yeah. Brian, you got anything to show or throw, throw something up? Yeah. You know, you know, one thing I wanted to say because I haven't heard you guys say it, but we, yeah. we keep talking about how like black and white can save our butt sometimes, right? So yeah. if something if something is not, uh, I don't know, doesn't look great, but um, I think, in my opinion, some of the some of the greatest black and white photographers go out with the intention of shooting in black and white um, versus yeah. going the other way around. So if, if you're shooting in, in raw, I would, I would, you know, I like, I'd like to shoot streets. I do sometimes to challenge myself is I'll change my picture profile to black and white because the yeah. raw photos come out. Actually, Evan's yeah. taught me that thing because I thought, oh, sh they're all going to be in black and white. They're actually in color in raw, but in JPEG, they'll come out black and white. So yeah. Um, so after like studying some some street photographers that I'm really into and learning that they go out and they use black and white through the viewfinder to look for like shadows and contrast 
things that you might not notice if things were in color. And I think I think you guys are aware of that, but for those people that are watching now that don't, um, so I tr I tried this. I'm still I'm still like a, a, a very much a color photographer. But um, yeah, what do, what do I do? Am I supposed to share a photo or? Yeah, share a photo, share a screen. Apologies for the YouTube problems. We're not sure, but uh, yeah, our show is just so good. We brought we brought YouTube down tonight. We broke the internet. We broke the internet. <laughs> yep. I, I know I, exactly where you took this. I was I with you for this one? No, um, I was by myself. But um, like I said, I don't post black and white a lot, but I really love black and white. Like. On my website, I took it down, but on my website, I have a whole section full of black and white photos. But um, mm. like for, for this one, the the sun was kind of coming in at a at, a, at like a weird temperature, and my white balance was wrong, and and so this wasn't one I shot in black and white. This one I turned black and white, and it just made so much more sense to me. So yeah, definitely, um, especially, especially with the lines. Yeah, I thought. I mean, when the sun comes in on the bridge over the tracks, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know. And I yeah. ran after this guy because I saw him through the window and I was down by the CN Tower, so I ran after him. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that. The middle, but. I've done the exact same thing. I, I, I might have shot it from, like, the ground and used one of the shadow lines as, like, a leading line. If he was, like, more on that middle line, I mean, perfect leading line and just shot it from the ground. So I was trying to... I couldn't get the frame on the other side, but I was trying to frame it up with something. Yeah, I get you. I get you. Yeah, so that's that's that. It's a good one, man. But when we come back, like, um, when we come back, I do have some shots that I specifically shot recently, all in black and white on purpose. I only got a few good ones back. Yeah, throw them up. Uh, oh, now okay, okay. Sure, well. uh, guys, please please like this video. It it helps us pay rent. No, it doesn't, but. <laughs> it will. <laughs> Not yet. She <laughs> <laughs> wants us to live. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys have seen. There's a guy who uh, he makes the videos and he says, "Like this video and subscribe because he has two uh, dogs that need to be fed." <laughs> and I, it yeah. worked for me. I mean, I don't I have, have to like it and subscribe. I don't right? have kids. I don't have dogs, so that's all I got. Man. <laughs> so, so the four pictures I'll show you now. I, I, I shot black and white, and I, these I, are I, I love this. All like one block from my house. So, yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit different for me, but I like, I like the contrast between him and the building, and I purposely offset him. Yeah, um, and then had the diagonal lines. I don't know. For me, it was interesting and it worked. It's a frame. It's a frame and a frame because that um, rail acts as a frame for the smaller frame because it cuts off. But I heard of the image. And this one, I mean, but I have no idea what these look like in color because I should like I, I purposely yeah. shot these in black and white. But yeah. um, what I most what I most like about obviously there's a lot of bokeh here. There's not too much and it's only in focus here. I'd say here and here. But Mm -hmm. What I most loved about this one was because this was like a black grate, and the way the light hits it, yeah, um, just it's kind it's of timing. It's timing, yeah. I really yeah, think I'll, symmetry in black and white really, really, really punches through. Yeah, and, and I think the thing about black and white too is that because you don't have the color, your brain actually can uh, put a, a lot of stuff into it. Your, your brain can visualize it in so many different ways. And that's what makes it more uh, interesting. Yeah, and a, a lot more thought goes into it, right? Because right. you don't you don't have all that color data, right? So you're looking at, at other ways of making that shot interesting. Right. Yeah, exactly. and, and that's that's how you got to bring out the best in that shot because you you have no color data in that scene at that point, um, and you're just focusing on how can I make this image stand out and pop. Yeah. Yeah, and that's has a lot to do with yeah, because you're focusing on light and texture and texture. Yeah, yeah. This one, I think I put on my stories once, and a lot of people wrote me and said, "What is this? Can you what guys? But what is it though? Can you guys tell or no? Uh, it looks like a helmet, broken bicycle helmet, or some of some sort. So it's uh, actually a respirator. A respirator? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It has two filters on the sides. On the side, yeah. Mm -hmm. but how did you? How did you shoot this? 
Well, yeah. I just found it laying on the ground and it looked pretty nasty. And I thought, is it in Toronto? Know, someone, yeah, yeah, it's like it's like yeah, like it's uh, in front of the uh, Scotia Bank. It was just laying there on the ground. Really? The thing, the, the thing was, as I remember now, this was neon pink. This was neon pink, and these were white. But there's so many colors at Scotia Bank. This would have been a super colorful photo, and this wouldn't stand out. Now, granted, no one knows what it is, but I thought it was interesting. I think it's that's the mystery of the photo. Um, and I think it was I like that one too. You should start like a separate black and white IG brand. I th I thought of it, but and the, actually, this photo I don't know if I love it because because it's maybe a little hard to see him. I got a little bit of motion blur. He was mop he was mopping here. Mm. Um, this is, yeah. Look at all the frame. Look at all the frames in this. In this the is not hoops, but yeah, that's what caught my eye because you got frame to another frame to a frame in the back. So like through three uh, three layers, but yeah, that was a better story, Andre. Here you go, man. Thanks, brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, good photo, man. Thank awesome, you. awesome. I'll share something real quick. Let's just go to, so basically, like we're talking about like, if you're sharing like landscape, Like this photo, like, first of all, it's like the middle of the day. It's not exactly the best time to take a photo, but I mean, there's nothing really going on in the sky and uh, you know, the light isn't the best and the photo is really just not that interesting, but I basically edited in Lightroom um, in black and white. And then you just get something like, something like this, hmm. right? Like it just, nice. I don't know, there's more, again, there's like more, there's more of a mood to it. There's more of like a romantic feel to it. So, I mean, again, if you're shooting landscape and there's no light or the light's flat or it's overcast sky or the sky's blown out, just flip into black and white. Even in Niagara Falls earlier in the year, uh, shot this in color, right? Like, again. Yeah, I don't know you got a lens at all. Well, it's not mine. It's Tam's from the group. Oh. Yeah, he's... I know. I don't, I don't have any props, man. I just... I just Mooch off other people. It's just how I roll. I give you. I give you props. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so again, the light's kind of flat. The photo's not that very interesting. But if you flip it to black and white, like, I don't know. It's more. It's more. There's there's more magic to it. I I agree that it it's more magic to it. It pops a lot more. I'm it glad. pops a lot more because like the sky, like the, the light's flat. The sky isn't an, isn't interesting. So that's when I like either shooting black and white or converting to black and white. And Lightroom has great presets for black and white too. That you can just kind of play around with. Mm -hmm. and it's there to. Uh, okay, so I'm sharing my screen and I'll share with you guys this photo. Uh, I think Paul, you were with me when I shot this one. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, so this one here. This is Ken Cliff. Uh, we were there. We went there early morning, but we hiked, and by the time we got to that peak point. It was really like okay, midday. 11. Yeah, it was like midday. So the sun was really harsh, right? Yeah. Uh, this was shot black and white. I haven't edited this in Lightroom. I haven't mm. even taken this into my Lightroom. Mm. I'm just, this is straight out of camera, black and white. Yeah. All the, all the black and white images I show are uh, uh, straight out of camera. I haven't touched them at all. I didn't even bring right. them into Lightroom. But um, I will bring you into Lightroom this is the color version, and I don't like the color version, right? Yeah. The reason yeah. is this. So I'll show you yeah. why I don't like the color version. Because yeah. if I take out what I did to it and do the before, let me go into develop tab. And let me show you the before. Mm -hmm. This is the before of the color version, right? Um, I just did a little crop in here. So if I take out the crop, but the light was so harsh that yeah. day and this thing was right underneath the sun. There's no shade around it or anything of that sort. The light was really harsh on it. Yeah. So I figured I will do it in black and white. Yeah. Um, and for me, the black and white tells a better story, story than this colored version. Right? 100%. Um, and, and I like the, the look of it. And this is the black and white unedited i haven't even touched it this is straight out of camera so imagine if you 
bring it in Lightroom and do a little bit of adjustments, you can get this to look a lot more better. Yeah, exactly. And that's, I mean, so, Yep. So, so one of the tips is that when you are in really bad lighting conditions, try black and white. Always, always. <laughs> I do that all the time. I do it all the time. And if you, you want like to, I did like your color a little bit though. Did you? Yeah, I like the color edit too. Uh, the, the, the black and white is very is interesting though, but I did like the color edit. Yeah, the color edit is not bad, but for me, the black and white stands out more for me. Oh, there's just more of a mood to it. Yeah. Like even with. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, the only thing that's missing in your in that photo, Evans, is just like someone walking or someone like holding hands walking, or something. Yeah. That's the only thing that you're missing. Then boom, you get sell to them for eight ninety nine or something. And this was also shot same day, uh, same conditions. This one here, I think I shared the colored version of this one on my IG. Yeah. Um, this is straight out of the camera. I haven't edited it. the colored version. I took out. I edited and I took out the branches and stuff. Um, but same kind of concept when it's really harsh light. Yeah, I harsh light, go. flat light, overcast. Black and white. Sky isn't very interesting. Black no. and white, guys. Always works. If you guys have questions, let us know in the comments. We'd be happy to uh, help. Or if you guys want to share a photo of your own, why not? Yeah. Jump into the... Uh... Can I share another one while I'm here? Uh, yep, go ahead. I'm just like looking around trying to find examples of a. Okay, well, I'm sharing one right now, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, right. I had it internet. And then, all right, so yeah, this is a picture of my wife. That's cool. And man. Um, that day we took quite a few pictures, and in fact, we just took it right right in front of the house. Mm -hmm. So we had cars and and stuff all over, and I just felt like, like the background was too. Right busy so uh the black and white i think adds a little bit of uh, mystery to the picture if you may put it that way so, i i think so yeah um, i like the dress i think the dress also works black and white yes so the dress was also actually a very colorful dress there yeah. is the color version of this picture that i probably not yeah. this picture but uh a similar picture in the same dress I should probably find that and, and share it. Um, mm -hmm. it that uh, the dress was very colorful, but it just didn't work for from behind and with the cars and all that. So that's why I I, I figured I'll try. Yeah, that's all we that. want. Yeah, and yeah. here real quick. You and shoot I, black. You got black and white. <laughs> You're like, I don't have black and white. I'm like, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So especially in this scenario, like when you have competing colors, right? Mm. Like her dress is very colorful. This is uh -huh. African print. They're really right. colorful and, yeah. and very yeah. bright. And you have all those cars of different colors in the background as well, which also will add on to that color, right? Uh -huh. the, the, the picture will get very busy. So in black and white, when you tone down some of those colors, it actually gives it a better look. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. 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 All right. I like, um, I like it. All right. I um when I find the color version, I will share it. But sure. for now, I am going to find a way to stop sharing the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna um I can't figure out I can't find this photo, so I'm just gonna share. This is like from from my website, it's like kind of sure. like behind. What do you call it? like the? Throw it up. Where you edit your site. So Throw let me show up. you why oh, I yeah. feel like I feel like black the, white, the yeah. black and white version of this is so much better because the the window was kind of like frosted, but there was some really ugly buildings back here, and I wanted to, especially with maternity, I like to capture the kind of the light on the belly just to show the shape. Yeah, and so I'm not super impressed with this. And if you come out of here and look at the black and white version, this is as big as I can make it, unfortunately, off my website. But I feel like it works so much better. Yeah. Okay, obviously it's pun it's out a little bit further, but I think I think the contrast and the shadows here and it kind of you know doesn't show our face. You can't tell who it is. Gives it some mystery. But now this building with there's cars parked here, kind of like in in 
salon like kind of like yours the back was so distracting right. and and now the you know the focus is on her belly and uh hmm. the look i think that's an example of how you can because i just thought the background was way too distracting yeah and um, yeah, exactly you know, similar, good, good way to hide stuff similar to this one yeah and, and when it was not in black and white the the color of the wall was close to the color of the, the belly and all that of, of her skin yeah right yeah. right absolutely great photo though great photo man thank you thank you any questions guys let us know in the comments we'd be happy to help but again if you want to share a photo please do I guess something else to share. Uh, let's do that. Let's do this. Let's do even like this is like Toronto Public Library. Do you guys have me? Ooh. Yep. Yeah. So this is Toronto Ooh. Public Library. So, so quick tip is that you actually um, need a permit to shoot, but the permit's free. Last time I checked, because I actually did a meetup here. Well, not really meetup, but just a couple of friends and I went to shoot, and they actually said. You can't do it. You need to sign a permit and whatever. It's free. You just need to sign a piece of paper saying you're not going to sell the photos. But it's a great building to shoot inside. And I kind of like it the way it is. But if you just want to, like, flip this into black and white, you just go to your presets on the left hand. And just a great way to kind of, like, have a base edit and just see what kind of pops. For me, it's, like, the lights. <laughs> even, yeah. though, even, like, the lights at the top. I like that punch, the black and white punch. punch one. And then you can just play around with however you want it to look, right? Like, it's really just that easy. Um, there's a flat, which I don't really love. Soft, which I don't love. Meh, infrared. I don't like, I don't like the sepius thing. <laughs> but, however you say that. However you say it. Um, yeah, so that's just, I mean, it's really that easy. And it's just really about, I think architecture looks great, black and white. Yeah. I mean, if you have like the right kind of building to it, uh, you can find some really cool buildings. Um, where was the other one? Let me show you guys something. Oh, yeah, it was here. Uh, even like photos like this, I mean, which has been shot like a billion times, right? Everyone takes that photo, which is fine. It's a, it's a cool hey, photo. Hey, you're missing something. You're missing a plane. That photo. Oh, right yeah, the plane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the plane. Oh, <laughs> I'm coming. You're missing the I rocket. Shot this, I shot this January 25th, 2020. So the photo <laughs> coming soon. Uh, but even move away from that shot and go to something like this mm -hmm. where you have to like basically have your camera tight against the building and then you get like really tight shots and you can have some really cool uh moody black and whites i don't even know yeah so my pitch by some of the point is like Look at architecture and look at architecture in like black and white is I guess the point I'm trying to make because uh, especially when you have really tall buildings and have like lines like this, it's it could be really interesting. All I'm missing is like the bat signal at the top. It's basically all, all I'm missing. Sometimes with the color of glass, like for example, I, yeah. like I know where this. I know the color is not this way, but for example, some buildings have kind of like a bluish hue, and another building next to it might have a black color. And so when yeah. the black reflects off of a blue. It's kind of gets lost in there, yeah. and so when you flip it yeah. to black and white, it's right. immediately apparent that you can see the reflection. So I think it, I think That's it works right. for buildings too. Yeah, hundred percent. Look for reflections. I don't know what else I have in here. Um, I, I find that I find that black and white actually shows, unless it's a trick on the eye. I don't know any science behind this, but I find black and white. Um, actually shows more texture and more detail. Exactly, exactly. Like even like something like this, just a rainy, just raindrops on a bike mm. rack. It's not very interesting, but you can. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, like see how it just changes. Like it just yeah. makes 
it's more like so, more of a food. I don't know if you guys do this, but when I when I look at old school photos, you know, like World War One photos and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I I first look at them, take them in as black and white, and then I colorize them in my head. <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, okay, what would yeah. the ground look like? Was yeah. Probably, okay. Then after a while, I begin to see some color, even though right. it's still a black and white picture. You know. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, Everyone's got their own approach. You just gotta have the have the approach that uh, that works yeah. for you. But again, like architecture, oh, and always with architecture, always like look up. Like always, you always want to make sure that you look up because you always get different angles, and sometimes better angles too. Yes, the more texture, more detail, hundred percent. Thank you. Is that, is, that, is that all you guys have? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you're the host. You just gotta keep it going. You, you put someone you want, on the you spot. Go, you, want, you want me to go deep in the archive? Should I go through my Facebook albums? <laughs> oh yeah, let's go do that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I got one for so, you. So the guys, my <laughs> live when, when I when I reload uh, my live now, it's it's not uh, it says arrow. Like it's not just why you too? Yes. Why you too? I, I don't know what's going on with you too. It's completely Evans, uh, Evans, you're muted. I don't know if you meant to do that or not. It looked like you were talking. Yeah, I'm just saying that it's it's YouTube doing that. YouTube, YouTube, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I'm getting the same Sorry, guys, thing too. I, I hope, I hope the playback actually has all this, you know. Otherwise, we're just yeah. talking to ourselves. There goes the watch. <laughs> there goes the watch. Star. Come on, Paul. Come on. You had one job. I had one job. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it won't be back next week, eh? Oh man. Yeah. So uh, this one. Um, I, I have a thing with with photo, especially people that have some age and some years on them. I have a thing with photographing them in black and white because for me it just kind of makes the photo timeless. And this, uh, I've, I've shared this before. This is one of my favorite portraits. It was the homeless man in Montreal, and I gave him five bucks to take his portrait, and his face just like lit up, and he just the expression, you know. And I shot this with it with an A six thousand and a kit lens, so. Um, <laughs> But I'll forever love this photo, and uh, I just think, you know, I up the clarity a bit, like I accentuated his wrinkles because, you know, it was to kind of show the grittiness and the dirtiness of, you know, yeah. his, you know I hate to say, it, but I'm saying it in a, in a kind way, but like He's to got a kind of soul, though you can tell, you know, capture the texture. And to be honest, I don't know what the color picture looked like because as soon as I got, I have a few others of some people, but as soon as I got home, I flipped them to black and white and started editing them like that, and I've never looked back since. So. Yeah, especially with street. And if you want to take a close photo, I think you do need to have some sort of some sort of communication with them to have kind of like a more of more authentic photo. Because obviously he seemed pretty, he seemed pretty comfortable. Yeah, I got him like half, and I only took one shot too. So that's what I got. For it. Yeah, I don't know. I was I was brand new to photography, and I didn't want to like, I don't know. It felt kind of weird asking somebody first yeah. of all. I sure. walk by him like twice and I'm like, man, something about this guy's face is cool. I wonder if he'll let me take his photo. So it, yeah. it worked out. Oh, he and, seemed like uh, he seemed like he had a kind yeah. soul. I've I've entered him into some contests and I haven't won yet, but I always said if I if I ever win and I win some money, I'm gonna go find him. Yeah, yeah, you should. You should. Okay, let me share this one. Whose channel are we on? Whose channel are we on? Yeah. Yeah, Paul. Wait, Paul, Paul, you need to are come you, again. Are you ready, next are you ready to get uh, the Demonetized? <laughs> oh, I'm not even monetizing. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get demonetized? Demonetized? <laughs> nah, nah. All right. Oh, oh, I see. What you're doing. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep it PG. Oh, so <laughs> this <laughs> this image go. here, I shot it in black and white. Um, I was shooting it in color. But I wasn't getting the shot I wanted because the light was very dramatic. It was coming from the top, yeah, um, with a grid on it, and it was just going down, like you can see in that circle down there. 
Um, the color wasn't working out for me, so I shot this in black and white. Just because I liked the the black and white better because of the contrast, right? The, the, the room was dark and you have the light coming down on her and I liked it better than the color versions. Yeah, again, mood, right? Mood, yeah. So total mood there. In most scenarios, I'm looking at the mood and the scene and determining whether this is gonna stay in color or I should shoot in black and white. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I will still shoot the color and convert, uh, but most of the time, if I feel the image is gonna be stronger in black and white, I will just turn my dial to shoot it in black and white. Also, like, is it just because she's further away from the camera it works black and white? Like, it's not that um, tight on her, right? Not really. It's just yeah. it's just the positioning of the light, right? Because um, it, it was dramatic. It's basically similar way I light myself, except that I add on the background lights and stuff, and so you can see a little bit of depth, right? Mm -hmm. In this scenario, there was no depth for me to want to show the color off. Yeah. Plus, so the color in there wasn't really working it out for me because there was not too much depth to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But shooting it in black and white and having all the deep shadows in there, uh, with the highlights kind of worked out better for me than the color. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the black and white just creates more of a distance too. Yeah. Because she's further away from the camera. I don't know, it just creates more of a, I don't know, distance or I'm not sure how to explain it, but it's there's definitely there's definitely a vibe there. That's that's for sure. Kim is working, uh Kim is calling YouTube tech and apparently Amazon Fire is working, so <laughs> I don't know. Thanks, uh, thanks, Kim, for working on that. I don't know. I don't even know what's going on, but that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to share this last one. Tell all the little the little kids to close their eyes. All right. On this one. Oh <laughs> so, so this one, um, it was just window light. Yeah. Right window light coming in from her right hand side. Yeah. Um, I chose black and white because the background to me wasn't pretty. Right. Okay. It was just um, a foam core board behind her, but the board looks very dirty. Um, dirty. I, sh oh. I shot it in black and white so I can put that board kind of a little bit cleaner. It looks a little bit more cleaner because yeah. um, it, it kind of blends in with the the depth and everything kind of blends in with it with the sh shadows and stuff like that. Huh. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's photo, man. I have the exact same photo of Brian, which is weird. Did you have did you use negative fill on the right side or no? Um no, no. So just natural shadow? Just natural shadow. I got and one too, Paul. It was a very small window. It was a very small window coming in, so. Oh, it looked big. You can also tell the kids to turn their eyes. <laughs> Drum roll, please. You gotta, it's not as sexy as yours. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, this is what I think of YouTube today. Yeah, thank you, what's, YouTube. What's happening, guys? You guys know my family's watching, right? Oh my god. Oh no okay. <laughs> that that is the Canadian yeah. symbol for peace. Oh, yeah. oh you should have said that. How did you how, how, did, how did you shoot that? <laughs> um I had a uh uh how did I shoot that? I think I put um my softbox, it was a small softbox and it was like 45, but I put it straight on like over my head and down. So the shadow would be like real dramatic. I didn't want the Rembrandt. I wanted it to be real dramatic. And the, actually I create this photo. I remember this was the day that like, I think I got shadow banned on uh, Instagram. Oh yeah. Posted a photo and got like, uh, you know, my reach was like 100, which right. is impossible if I have 10,000 at the yeah. time, like 10,000. So I was so mad. I was like, I'm tired of this. And so that was my post. Oh, and it said a letter, a word that starts with an F. Yeah. Instagram, <laughs> and that's what it. That's what the caption says. And then a bunch of people yeah, wrote, like, "They're like, you shouldn't say that. Instagram's gonna ban you." I'm like, apparently they already have. So. 
I've been banned on Instagram a couple of times for no reason, so I get it. I don't know why. Like if my photos are that good, you have to ban me. Don't don't get it. What it is? Uh, unfair advantage. Unfair advantage. Unfair advantage. Uh, thanks everyone for jumping on. Uh, let me try to find a couple of photos. Uh, apologies for the technical difficulties, but YouTube apparently does not like us anymore. It's not our fault. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, what can I show you guys? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, I thought I found something. Hold on a second. Let me see if I find it here. And oh man, I was this close. I was <laughs> this close to finding it. You were this close. This close. So, but now I'm I'm much better at my file organization though. So this picture I'm looking for is like 20, 2017. <laughs> oh, can't find it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Yeah, you go. I got you. I got you. Uh, let's go. Let's let's uh, let's go. Let's. Um, okay. So these photos. So I'm basically taking, you guys have me? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. So, and these kids are jumping off the pier. So, you know, I'm firing off a million shots, but I don't know. I don't know if I like the color version. So again, it's like all about mood. So let's just see what happens if we do black and white. Uh, I don't know. I think again, I kind of like that more, but that's just me. I think I do too. Get that foot out of the way. Also, like his swim trunks are a nice contrast, I think. But is your horizon crooked? Yeah, it's all it's all It's all, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all let's, uh, let's not piss off the people. The horizon people? Yeah, the horizon people, man. I get it. <laughs> nothing nothing worse than an off kilter horizon. You guys know I'm a horizon person, so I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, yeah, I I see I that a lot in my pictures from 2016. Apparently, in 2016, I didn't have a a concept of horizon. Horizon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so all these pictures that I loved, I'm looking at them. I'm like, dude, you it was tilted. Like, can't you see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Oh man! It's funny. And here I was posting the pictures, and everybody, oh wow, very nice work! You are a professional. <laughs> that's that's, what, that's, that's yeah. what I always say when you start out. Don't send your your photos to family and friends. Right? They always say it's good. Never. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Again, similar type of deal. The lights isn't really that interesting. So flip it to more of a mood. The, the pure axe is a nice little like divider in the photo. Um, all kinds of stuff like that. That's the more of the story. Don't be afraid to play in uh, in black and white. Because again, it's all it's all about the story. You know, photography is about telling stories, right? So whichever way tells the story better, color or black and white, that's the way that you want to go with. And there really is no right or wrong answer, just the way that you want to tell the story. Yeah. That you, makes you're sense. In charge, you're in charge of, of the mood, right? Um, I know we always talk about the rules and the and the general stuff that we need yeah. to do. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, photography is an art, right? And you, 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 the person in charge of that canvas, right? Paint it the way you want. Paint it the way you want. You're the artist. You're the artist. Yeah. Rules are meant to be broken. I mean, rules yeah. are there to uh, guide you. Learn it first, then break it. Then break it. Right. Yeah. Learn it, then break it. It's actually a good tip. Yeah. Because you want to know what you're breaking. <laughs> Hey, we should uh, we should do an episode on uh, you know like the rules uh, of street photography. You know, I'm yeah. sure 
Canada rules yeah. might differ from the US rules. I, so, I would just say, don't don't be like Brian. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be good. <laughs> Brian, Brian is it's really good at street photography. Yeah. The thing that Brian does, I can do. Last Saturday, we were out shooting. And then Brian takes over the middle of the street. <laughs> and, the <laughs> comes, and they all have to wait for Brian. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. They're like, the cards are going to hit you. And I was like, no, no, I just put my hand up. <laughs> oh, that's so. Oh, Brian, you are now so Canadian, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna hit you. Okay, yeah. No, no. It's the awkward, awkward thing that when it when depends, people... though. It depends. I don't. I don't know about that. In the it U.S., on, however, where, you know, where, where... Right <laughs> one time, one time, I was shooting in the middle of the street, and I took a. Um, I think you call them pylons here, but I took an orange safety cone. Yeah, and I yeah. brought him out into the middle of the road, and I set it down, and then I and then I sat right in front of it, and I did all my shots, and I thought, eh, there's a cone here, no one hits a cone. <laughs> no. yeah. Maybe I was lucky. But... No one hits a cone until they do, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, the hard, the hard part, like, uh, I mean, there's so many different ways to do street photography and different things that I try, but like when people shoot with me, the one thing that they that they are inherently not comfortable with is getting in someone's face and taking the photo. But mm. if, oh, yeah. if you kind of want to surprise them because you want it to be natural. At the same time, you don't want to be offensive. So I like to use primes. I like to get close to people. But I was just shooting with my Zoom. I've never shot with a Zoom before. And I was shooting with a Zoom, and I was like, oh, this is kind of nice because I can kind of stand back a ways, and it's a little sniper. bit sneaky. You're a sniper. So, you know, it's, yeah, it's different. But. Did you always ask, you always ask for permission? I never ask for permission unless I'm going to take a portrait. Unless I want them to stand there and no, I never ask for permission. Check my last video. Never ask for permission. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was, I was, I was, did you see I posted I was, on, I was on just, Instagram? Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I was just glad uh, Paul didn't catch me in that video because yeah. you know what I did? I actually moved the fence and went through and did a time lapse. Okay. Oh, <laughs> on the train, so close to the train train tracks. <laughs> is that what you did? Is that is that why I lost you? Well, kind of. <laughs> Brian said that you basically hung your gear over the side of the railing. Oh man! <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> oh man! I had I had a I had an RS two. Yeah. On a long monopod, extended all the way up in the air. And it was bent. It was like this. Oh, was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they were all afraid I was going to lose it. I was not comfortable with it. I would have got it on tape. For, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I still call it tape, but nothing goes on tape anymore. Yeah, it's good on tape. It goes on the beta machine. So I'm glad you didn't lose the gear, man. Look, looking forward to yeah. the uh, review. Yeah. At, at one point, I was afraid that tripod was going to br break. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, so this you, is the photo, bud. You guys know this guy, right? Yeah, yeah, Adi. Yeah, that's that, that that's Adi and his wife. Yeah, he's trying to find this nice. picture. Yeah, yeah, so this was in the fall. The colors were very dense, and mm. uh, for some reason, I feel like black and white kind of worked for the, this picture. And of course, I had the long prime on my side too, compressing the. The heck out of the background. So, <laughs> yeah. what color was yeah. his jacket? Do you remember? You said what color was what? Was his jacket? Do you remember? Oh, I do remember, but I I, I can find it. Uh, Cause I was gonna say because I know like I've shot and the leaves are orange and brown, and then the people wear like a brown coat, mm. and she wears. And I'm like, oh god, you guys are just being right into the background. So that's another. Let me see if I can white. find it here real quick. What lens did you use on that shot? 135, man. That's that that's mm. my favorite lens, man. The background is just smooth. Oh, even at the long okay, so this is let me show you guys this shot. Then you can see the color. But I have to come back and share, right? Jeez. So I have my camera right in front of the stuff I can barely see. All right, share screen. All right, you, see, you guys see it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, that's the color. So the kid actually went in the woods 
<laughs> and they left her alone. And it was so natural, you know, they were posing and she was running in the woods and stuff. So I was just clicking away. Yeah. Ooh, I'm, yeah. Having, I'm having some lens and uh some lens envy right now. Lens envy. Oh, let me tell you. I, I, I had it. I've been, I've been it. hiding it for a long time. Let me tell you, I, I had it two years ago and I bought it and I never regret it. Like, you know, I was this close to buying the 105 mm-hmm. uh, F1.4. I still envy that lens. Like the 105 1.4, I need it. <laughs> hmm. But the thing about the 135 is that for weddings, it just gives you that yeah. extra reach, you know? Like especially when you it's a, a Catholic wedding or church where they said no flash and the church is dark. What is it? A one eight? One one eight, yeah. One eight. Yeah. So you know, no flash, the church is dark, and then the, the Catholic uh, weddings they don't allow you to get close to the stage. So you are this far out, and so if you have this, it helps. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the colors too. For some reason, the colors out of that. Sigma, just you know, give it a yeah, little bit of really, really good. Yeah, yeah. All right, want to wrap it? Oh, thank you guys for watching. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I, we don't even know if this episode is gonna upload or what. So Paul, Paul is gonna have to host again next week, and uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it again next week, Paul. Don't worry, we got you. <laughs> Sorry, thanks everyone for jumping on. We got, we got. Oh, it says we have three people on somehow. So fantastic. Yeah, hey, thanks. Well, go thanks ahead, everyone Brian. for joining us again. I won't be here next week, so hopefully, Traveling. yeah, hopefully you fellas can uh, get Brian, the other Brian, in. But uh, thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. If you haven't already given a big thumbs up to this video or subscribe to Paul's channel, please do so. We uh, certainly appreciate it. And we did have dogs that uh, help feed those animals. Uh, please, please, uh, please, uh, please spay and neuter your pets. Thank you. Yes, it's important. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thank, you guys. <laughs> thank you guys for joining us on another Wednesday. I know majority of you couldn't get in, but it's still good to hang out. Um, so thanks for yeah. spending another Wednesday night with us. Absolutely. Hope you learned something new today. <laughs> Absolutely. Apologies for the te- technical difficulties. Uh, if you can't get in, watch the replay. Like it uh, then. And uh, hopefully it kind of gave you some insight on when to use black and white, when not to use black and white, how to use black and white, all that stuff. And I'm sure we'll touch upon it again. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So we'll see you next Wednesday. We'll get McGowan on. And it should be a fun time. And hopefully we, people can actually get into the live, which is important. So, yeah, thanks again. And we'll see you next one. Have a great evening, guys. Peace. Cool. All right. Thank you.